Welcome back to What RT Noobs for Channel Disturbance. This is an Object 261, the Tier 10 Soviet SPG. It's located on the west spawn of Airfield and it's under the command of Dr. Nix. Yes, he's at it again. He's still trying to get 100% on his MOE. And you can see he's already got three marks on the barrel. He wants the fourth mark, so to speak, which is getting 100%. Well, game started. Well, this uh, Object 261 looks very festive, doesn't it? It's got the um, the branches all over it, which is the the camouflage which Wargaming was actually selling or distributing just recently in the um, black market, I believe. I think they were charging a pretty price for this as well, but um, not quite as good as one of Rusty's. Okay, oh, lots of enemy tanks streaming towards the uh, heavy pass. He fires around it. Direct hit on the Wizzy 111 Model 5A. Wow, excellent shot. And that was a leading shot as well because they those tanks were moving at a fair lick. And he got a direct hit on them, lined it up perfectly. But when you've had as, as much practice as Dr. Nix in firing RT, yes, you do judge things quite well on distance. He fires around at the uh, 60 TP. No results because he was un unsighted at the time that the hit went in. Again, you've noticed Dr. Nix is relocating after every shot and he needs to because apparently somebody's been creating mods that'll enable you to work out where the RT fired from. Yes, I'm afraid it's an illegal mod because you're not supposed to be able to see that sort of thing. And the 5A takes another hit for 343. Wargaming will catch up with the people who've done it eventually. Those people who are using illegal mods, they will suffer. They will probably lose their accounts and have to start all over again. There's the 60 TP. He is missing some hit points. So he looks like he was hit. And that shell hit the target as well. No explosion. Uh, Dr. Nix is going right into the corner now. Now he's looking near the cap area on the enemy camp. Uh, because there might be an enemy arty in there. Ah, there's that 5A again. Now he's going to feel a bit victimised when this shell goes in, but there again, he did stay in sight. And that's 211 hit points he's never going to get back. And Dr. Nix has gone right into the corner. And good job that he has, actually, because an enemy Sheridan is in the south area. And so, obviously, that Sheridan doesn't know he's here. And here comes an EBR as well. So Dr. Nix might have to actually move, and he might actually have to move east to get away from these guys. Yeah, our EBR is actually making a move. Dr. Nix is now aiming towards the Fosh 155. Dialed in, rounds out. Direct hit! Now, our EBR is just between us and the enemy. So if they do come this direction, we should be able to get... Um, some warning mind you there's a number of our tanks in the way as well okay we've got an STB which is that Japanese medium he's sitting there at that point at the moment and Dr. Nix fires around in straight away at the spot where he was last seen probably damaged him I think it's very likely he did Now the 18 centimeters on the 18 centimeter shells on this RT will do 900 alpha with a burst radius of 10 meters. So if you land the shell near the target, it's going to suffer some damage. Even a non-penetrating round is going to do at least 400 hit points of damage, or 450, or should be around about that sort of level, plus or minus 25 percent. He's waiting for an enemy to come around that corner. The Object 430U is not poking the corner. And he's got three marks on his barrel as well. He's holding back, waiting for the enemy to make the mistake. Oh, now we just lost our Object 705, taken out by that 5A that Dr. Nix was attacking earlier. Goes by the name of Golmi Wands. OK. 
Okay, Dr. Nix keeps thinking about lining up a shot. Ah, an E4 has come into sight. And in fact, actually, he's going to hit these two because they're both together. Fires the round in and hits both of them. Gets more damage off the Fosh 155 than the 60 TP, but it's always nice when you hit more than one tank at the same time. And there goes the 60 TP's turret. Yeah, he's Amaract. Well and truly dumped the turret some distance away from the tank. Okay, now he's got two targets to fire at. One of them is a gorilla who took the round, and that's a penetrating round. 931 hit points of damage. That's definitely a penetrator. Went right through that screen, which is minimal armor. So he's lost a huge amount of hit points, and Dr. Nix has suddenly got a huge boost in his score. And he needs to do more like that. Now, the enemy is capping, but I don't think we're worried about that at the moment. There, we do have a Death Star nearby. We are actually losing this game quite badly. We're six tanks down on the enemy. Okay, he's getting ready to shoot. He's just working out. Oh, there's an EBR there. And, oh, we just lost the Death Star. So Dr. Nix is now going to have to go very defensive. That EBR is going to come around the corner any second. Here he is. And he took a round, but it was a non-penetrator. But he needs to get out of here quickly because that EBR could finish him off. In fact, actually, it's the Sheridan we need to be worried about. I think more than anything, he's got the derp gun. Oh, and now we've got a 30B ahead of us. And we've been hit by the enemy RT as well. And we're surrounded, basically. Gone very defensive. And there's the back chat second shell. Oh, dear. That's the problem with having an RT with an open cockpit. And this is the last on our team. Yeah, there goes the object 430U. I'm afraid the rest of the team just weren't up to scratch when it came to uh, Dr. Nix's standard. They may have had the three marked tanks on their team, but um, yeah, not a good result. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. Well, yes, it was a defeat, but uh, Dr. Nix did pick up a bruiser medal in that battle for getting at least five critical hits. He got nine in that one. And his win eight for the game was 2754, which is definitely Unicom standard. And if we look at the team scores, we can see that he didn't get the highest damage in the game. No, he got the second highest damage in the game. The high scorer was, in fact, the Object 2684, the Bobject. He managed to get 4466, whereas Dr. Nix managed 3982. The Nix high scorer was the EBR 105 on the enemy team with 3173. When it came to kills, um, it was shipped between 2684 and the Heshbarn on the enemy team managed to get three kills. And then there was five, or oh, it's five notes, five members of the enemy team managed to get two kills. I'm afraid uh, Dr. Nix didn't get any kills at all during that game. And uh, when it came to base XP, yes, I'm afraid it's uh, all three top slots are for the enemy team. The Sheridan, who picked up a Confederate, managed to get 899. The EBR managed to get 877. And their batch at 155.58. The guy who got Dr. Nix got 8.35. Dr. Nix only managed 2.47 in that one. But it does place him second on the XP for his team. He fired 11 rounds. Got 7 direct hits. 1 penetration. 13 splash. Damage of 3,982 hit points. Of which 3,563 were at more than 300 meters. Obviously the one that was a little closer was the EPR 105. Who he shotgunned as he drove past. Uh, didn't get a penetrating shot. But it was still a pretty good one. And you wonder why that wouldn't be a penetrating shot. Because the EBR should be penetrated by anything that hits it. Literally going straight through the side of it. Because um, in fact it should have been a full uh, uh, all out kill. But uh, again, that's Wargaming making the wheelie uh, vehicles completely indestructible. Uh, and uh, it's just, you know, unbelievable because this, this game really cannot work with those uh, EBRs being as powerful as they are. Two hits received from the enemy, two penetrations and one hit by way of splash damage. Well, yeah, the penetrations came from that AMX-30 and another one came from, I think it was the EBR-105. And, of course, the splash hits were the ones that killed him, the um, Batchat 155.58. 
eight enemy vehicles damage, none destroyed, but he did do 391 hit points of damage assist and 788 of stun assist of 14 stuns. On a premium count, he earned 52,299 credits, but after repair, ammunition, resupply and consumables, he made a small loss of 8,640 credits. He earned 360 XP, and there was no multipliers because, of course, it was a loss. But he's still on the route to getting 100% on his MOE, and I don't think it'll be long before he gets there. And I'll keep you updated as soon as he has got his 100%. Thanks for watching.